His career spans at least a half century, and for the last four decades, my first guest covered Super Bowls, World Series, NBA and NHL Finals, golf and tennis opens, and so much more. A celebrated broadcaster who is not only familiar on the airwaves in Los Angeles, but whose voice can be heard around the world, let's welcome sportscaster and author Ted Sobel, who's just released his first book, Touching Greatness, Tales from the Front Row with Heroes and Legends. It's great to have you. Thank you, Layla. It's great to see you again. Congratulations on your book. This is very exciting. Obviously, I mean, I said a half century. Uh, culmination of your incredible career. Well, you know, it's, it's a long time coming as far as the book's concerned because a lot of people would tell me, you have a story about everybody, whether it's sports or entertainment or just whatever. A lot of music in there as well. And they said, you should write a book sometime. So I did, but it took a long time. It took three years to write it. And I wrote so much, there's actually enough for two or three volumes. That's to be determined, but at least the first one's out. And it's pretty exciting. Definitely. So why did you decide to become a sports broadcaster? What was it about that profession that drew you to it? Because nobody would ever hire me as their <laughs> athlete. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so that's you're a sports lover. Exactly. I grew up loving sports. I wanted to play. I was too small. I wasn't athletic enough. I was pretty good, but pretty good is not going to make you a fortune in the in this world. So, um, you know, it got to the point where really people were, to me, it was something about just do something you love. It's about a passion. And if you have a passion, go for it. And that's why I say about anything. It doesn't matter what the extent of your life you're talking about. So to me, my passion was sports. So how can I do something in sports without playing it and talking about it was the next best thing. So it's, it's worked out pretty well. I mean, you've had such an incredible career. How many people can say that this many years later that their entire career, they did something that they loved so much and the people you came across, 750 Hall of Famers from across the board. I mean, we were talking sports, music, entertainment. You've been everywhere. You've met everyone. Yeah, well, that's part of my job. <laughs> at the same time, uh, you know, a lot of it is just right place at the right time. I'm one of these guys that wants to be where the action is. And that's where the people are. A lot of it is total coincidence. Sometimes I go out of my way to meet somebody because I think it's really good for my job mm -hmm. and for whatever interviews I was doing at the time. So uh, it just all fit into place. But, you know, again, the music, when you go to an event, and then you get invited backstage or you get invited somewhere to interview that person. That was not the plan originally. So uh, sometimes things just fit like a little jigsaw puzzle. That's mm -hmm. all. Well, and for anybody who's a fan of music from the 60s, 70s, they know what it means to kind of grow up in the canyon, Laurel Canyon we're talking about, where some of the most storied musicians lived, worked, collaborated. But it was a culture. It was a culture that you grew up with uh, growing up in Los Angeles. Yeah, I was lucky, too. In, in uh, Culver City, where I grew up, uh, that was more of the TV and movies location. You know, that is where all the great movies at MGM were made. Uh, Gone with the Wind, going all the way back to there. People, a lot of, most people think that was somewhere in Atlanta. None of it was in Atlanta. It was all down the street from me. Yeah. Now, that was before I was born. <laughs> mm -hmm. But still, a lot of TV shows, you know, the, the Andy Griffith show and all those, those old TV shows from the early 60s, they were made in Culver City, not in Hollywood. So I, I grew up there, and I got a little taste of that always. It was always sort of a part of my life. I tried to sneak into MGM Studios, and I did a couple of times, barely. They threw us out in a hurry, but I got a chance <laughs> to see some of the, the sets that you really wanted to see that were on TV. Sure. The music, too. My brother had a band in Culver City. They were the best in the, it was about 1965. They were the best in the area. And uh, they used to practice in my house. And then all of a sudden, people like the guy, like Flo and Eddie from the Turtles would come to my house. That's crazy. And they'd be sitting next to me on our leather couch <laughs> watching my brother's band practice. That's amazing. And, and so that was the kind of stuff. I was just sort of raised in it by accident, yeah. even though... My father had nothing to do with any of this. He made women's clothes right. for a living. Did he really? Figure. Oh, that's so oh, yeah. interesting. That is so. Well, I want to hear more about this book, and I want to hear more about some of the athletes that you came across, and uh, and where you worked as a broadcaster in Los Angeles. So we're going to do that after the break. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back. We've been chatting with legendary broadcaster, sports broadcaster Ted Sobel, who has just written a book, Touching Greatness, Tales from the Front Row with Heroes and Legends. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that I had the honor of working with Ted in Los Angeles at KFWV News Radio. And I mean, you're just one of many veterans in the business who I learned from. I cut my teeth there in the business. So with your book, Touching Greatness, we talked about that you've met 750 Hall of Famers at least. Uh, any particular athletes that made an impression on you throughout the years? Many of them did. Uh, not always good either, but they, yeah. they made an impression on me. You know, to me it was, um, there were so many different athletes. You met them and dealt with them for different purposes. Like sometimes, I, I went to so many games. I covered so many sports. A lot of it was just a little brief, hey, I need to talk to you for a couple of seconds in the locker room to get my 12-second sound bite, and I'm done. That's good. That's all I need. We're not hanging out together. We're not going out for drinks. And we're not, I'm not going to your house afterwards. It's like, just tell me, how, how did the game feel? You know, give me your – I gave 110%. You know, that kind of stuff. With the exception of Wayne Gretzky helping to design your business cards in the locker room. <laughs> yes. Well, not that, that to me, I don't know if he helped to design it, but that's, I love the way you put that because that's sort of what happened. Uh, what he did was he said, Ted, I know what you're trying to do. We took a picture together when he scored the 802nd goal of his career, uh -huh. which broke the record with Gordie Howe all time, right? So... I was there, and I, I covered his entire time when he was in L.A. playing for the Kings. He just got to know me as another guy in the media, but at the same time, he was really friendly and outgoing and not your typical superstar. Yeah. So I loved how he dealt with us and with me personally, and I asked him, I said, you know, they took a picture of us after you scored that 802, and you're holding the <laughs> puck up, and we're just and, – and I said, that picture came out so good – I would like to put that on the back of my business card because I'm going for hockey jobs. And if you got Wayne Gretzky endorsing you on the on your card, I think what else do you need? Up. Exactly, Babe Ruth is gone. You know, I can't use him anymore. Right, so right. Try Wayne. And he was the Babe Ruth of hockey. So yes, I, that's what we tried to do. And he says, "I'm going to take you downstairs." And he walked me into the locker room during a game. He was Incredible. hurt at the time. He wasn't playing. It's like, Wayne, I can't go in here. You know, I'm not, I got a credential. I'm not allowed in the locker room during the game. He goes, I think you're with me. It's okay. Gosh. I said, yeah, it's okay for you. But if they find <laughs> me, that credential will go, you know, goodbye. And, and this book is filled. <laughs> it is teeming with all those stories, stories just like the one you, you told. And with legends of just every possible sport you can think of. Is there any one sport, Ted, that you've never covered? Uh, tiddlywinks. Tiddlywinks. How about sumo wrestling? No, nope, never covered it. Okay. I've, I've, I've covered Olympics. Um, Everything else. Just, just the Summer Olympics in, in 84 in L.A. But to me, it was uh, not amount of covering sports, but just being there at big events. Yeah. So I've been lucky. I've been to the Masters when Tiger Woods won his big one. His great comeback just Gosh. a few years ago. And, and I was there. witness. To be witness yes, to those moments, that's incredible, yeah, that's Ted. That's special part about it, no doubt about it. Well, but it's also the radio stations, to... they, they, they put it in your hands for a reason. They put it in your hands for a reason. But yeah. before I let you go, I just wanted to ask you, Ted, um, first of all, where can people hear you today on the airwaves? I'm on Sports USA Network, which we do NFL and NHL games. Uh, so it's all over the country. I've, hopefully I'm in Charleston. I don't know, but... Uh, somewhere in the area, you'll be able to pick me up if you hold on to your antenna someplace. Yes, yes. <laughs> and yes, yeah, so all we got a 400 station network around the country. And, and anything, just real quick, anything that you're seeing in the current state of sports today that either you're happy about, not so happy about, how things have changed? Well, you know, to me, one of the things I'm happy about is that you could watch anything at any time, and the convenience is great. You know, when I was a kid, you got, you're lucky if you have one game a week on television. Now you can watch anything at any time, anywhere. So that's the best thing. Sure. The bad thing is that you know some of the athletes and the teams, they're more caught up in, they can do whatever they want to market. They don't need us as much like right. they used to. Mm. They used to want us there. Now they don't want us there so much. Hey, we can go online and do whatever we want and put up the that's face true. we want. That's the total difference. Well, from 
years ago. We still need you, Ted. <laughs> I hope so. Thank Touching you. greatness, tales from the front row with heroes and legends. Thank you so much for joining us. It's so great to see you again. Great to see you, Layla. We're back after this.